Hey everybody. So there's been recent news going around that Microsoft is already working on the next version of Windows after Windows 11. As of right now, it's unofficially known as Windows 12. Of course, that's probably what it might get named. Who knows if they keep if they continue with the numerical format. So it's like a repeat. You think about it. Windows 10 to some could be regarded as the new Windows XP or the new Windows 7. I don't think it's the new Windows 7. Windows 7 was still a whole lot better in my opinion. And of course Windows 11 um, I could see as the new Windows Vista. And I've actually talked about that couple years ago in this room, very first video I shot in this room when the home was still under construction. So, yeah, it's like a repeat. Um, of course, I mean, we had Windows XP, which was regarded as probably one of the best Windows operating systems of all time. Then we had the quote-unquote disaster that was Windows Vista. Now, I actually liked Windows Vista. Um, I was actually sort of quick to upgrade to it once I had a system that was capable of running it halfway decently because, let's face it, Windows Vista had some very high requirements for the time. It's not like today with Windows 11 where Microsoft is artificially raising those requirements really high for the OS. And that's, of course, what I call them here, the Microsoft Elite Class Mills. It's requirements for Windows 11. Now, Windows Vista actually required pretty steep requirements for a reason. Actually, no, take that back. The operating system had pretty steep requirements, but the minimum requirements were not that high, and if you ran Vista on a system that just met those requirements, your experience would not be that great. So Vista had a lot of criticism due to a lot of bugs during its launch, a lot of issues with drivers. I'm talking about you, NVIDIA. You was definitely responsible, I think, for a lot of this. Um, a lot of issues with drivers, a lot of bugs, a bloated operating system. At the time, we're talking about going from computers running Windows XP, which had very low requirements, to Vista that had much higher requirements. Vista had a pretty tarnished name for several reasons. And of course, there were features in Windows Vista that really ticked people off, like UAC and stuff like that. So, just two years later, after the launch of Windows Vista, two and a half years roughly, because Vista came out in early 2007, Windows 7 came out in the fall of 2009, and Windows 7 was like the proper Windows Vista. It brought a lot of nice features. Um, it actually took away some features that were built into the OS, like Windows Movie Maker, and stuff like that where you had to go online and download the Windows Live package to get those things back and they weren't as good. But um, Windows 7 overall though was a great operating system and I'd say it was like the ultimate replacement for Windows XP and a lot of people who were using Windows XP just totally skipped Windows Vista altogether and went to Windows 7. And then of course the cycle sort of repeated. I mean you had Windows 8 8.1 which was called Windows 8 for the sake of this video. Windows 8, um, Microsoft had an, had basically had a vision to turn the desktop computer into a tablet or a smartphone. The OS was way too geared for touch. Windows 8 did have some nice features under the hood, and it did have some nice features actually in the UI when you went to the desktop, including a decent explorer, a decent task manager, among other things. But there were some things I didn't like about Windows 8, including how the Windows Media Center was no longer available in the home version. You had to upgrade to Pro and then buy the Pro Pack to get it back, Media Center. And then, of course, Windows 10 came along, which fixed a whole lot of the issues with Windows 8. Hello, start menu, not start screen. <laughs> but overall, I mean, Windows 10, I mean, it became wide, it became widespread. Um, because let's say it was a whole lot better than Windows 8 and it took a, it took a lot of the good things about Windows 8 and improved upon that. And Windows 10 though, there were some things I didn't like about Windows 10 including the 
feature upgrades that came out. It was basically like upgrading and installing your operating system every year and a half or every year or every half a year actually. Um, but then again, Windows 10, the original model behind Windows 10 was here's a version of Windows that you can use now. However, we're going to continue improving that operating system and releasing new updates every year or so. And there was Windows 10 was unofficially known as the last version of Windows. Things were all great, for the most part. And then, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic came along. PC sales skyrocketed because a lot of people were now working from home because they couldn't go to the office. And then post-COVID-19 pandemic, um, there was a lot of, I'd say a good fair number of jobs that allowed flexibility, allowed you to work from home and stuff like that. So, I mean, but post-pandemic, the demand for PCs kind of went down. And I think Windows 11 was the answer. And I think that is the reason behind the Microsoft Elite Class Memphis requirements for Windows 11. And of course, Microsoft Elite Class is not an official Microsoft trademark, but that's my nickname for those minimum requirements that they have for Windows 11. Because Windows 11, the requirements were set so high that only the most elite class of computers back in 2021 could run the OS. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, computers that were made in 2021, pretty much all of them, for the most part, could run Windows 11. But let's say you bought a computer brand new back in 2018 with Windows 10, or you built a system back in 2018. And let's say you use a slightly older CPU from 2017. That doesn't mean you didn't spend a lot of money on that build. It's kind of an insult to get that notification on Windows Update saying, this PC doesn't currently meet the minimum sets requirements for Windows 11, and that's of course where I came up with the nickname Elite Class Requirements. So, Windows 11, I think for the most part, will be like a next Windows Vista for those minimum requirements, but also for a number of different things, including taking away ease of use from certain parts of the OS, like the lack of the ability to move the taskbar to you know, corners of the screen to the top, or sides of the screen to the top, and for goodness sakes, removing the right click menu from a taskbar to get quick access to taskbar options. Dumbing down the right click menu in File Explorer, which can be un undone with a registry hack. And the start menu in general, while I mean I think it's a step better than Windows 10, it's just I don't care for it. Uh, of course I run OpenShell on my um, on my systems, which gives me the Windows 7 style start menu back in Windows 11. So, for a number of different reasons, Windows 11 is regarded as another Windows Vista. Windows 10 was like the new Windows XP. Windows 11 is like the new Windows Vista. So, does that mean Windows 12 will be like the new Windows 7? Time will tell. We shall see. Because, again, the new version of Windows that's coming out in 2024, unofficially as up to date, known as Windows 12, it made it get a different name. We'll see what happens with this. I've heard there's going to be some user interface improvements. Dare we call them improvements? Might be deprovements <laughs> when you think about it. Um, like a floating taskbar and stuff like that. I'm not sure what to think about a floating taskbar. I wonder what they're going to do with the start menu. That's a good question. Will they actually make it more like Windows 7? Who knows? Yeah, maybe I'm just old school, but I think a lot of people out there would much prefer the Windows 7 start menu over the crap that's out there today. Now, as far as middle system requirements, it appears that Microsoft is going to adopt the Elite Class requirements for Windows 12 as well. So the Windows, so Windows 12 will have the same middle system requirements as Windows 11, but by the time Windows 12 comes out, maybe they won't be quite as steep. And I'd imagine there may be workarounds like Rufus to install the new Windows on systems that don't meet the Elite Class requirements. We shall see. It'd be interesting to see how some of this older stuff will actually run the new Windows. But who knows, maybe in this next version of Windows, um, maybe they'll make it to where you can't install it on 
computers that don't have a UEFI BIOS. That's the funniest thing about Windows 11 is the fact that its middle system requirements require a UEFI firmware with secure boot and TPM all that good stuff, but there are so many workarounds out there that even Microsoft themselves seem to openly support and say, here, here's a workaround to install Windows 11 on computers that don't meet the requirements. And that's why I think the Windows 11 Windows system requirements are nothing more than a marketing gimmick. Just like how when Windows 10 came out, how Microsoft claimed that Windows 10 would only be free for a year, so you better get it before summer of 2016. Well, we know what happened there. Matter of fact, I posted a video this year. You can still upgrade Windows 7 to Windows 10 for free. Yes. And apparently, from my findings, you can actually activate Windows 11 using a Windows 7 key. Imagine that. So yeah, um, Microsoft is already at work on a new build of Windows. Supposedly it's going to be like a new Windows 7 to fix the current Windows Vista, which is uh, Windows 11, I think. Um, and you, and you, you look back, one of the criticisms of Windows Vista was its steep requirements for hardware. Not artificially high requirements like we have with Windows 11, but the actual requirements needed to get a good experience with the operating system. And of course, Windows 7, its requirements were basically the same, but we were, of course, two years ahead at that point. So hardware had improved because computer manufacturers in a way had to scramble to produce better computers and of course hardware manufacturers like for AMD and Intel, Nvidia, all of them, they had to innovate and come out with better products to run Windows Vista and by the time they got all that mess ironed out, here we had Windows 7 and I think with Windows 12, of course, computers um, that are older, let's say 2019, 2018, which do meet, again, what I call the elite class requirements from Windows 11, should also be able to run Windows 12. Now, this is not confirmed yet. Who knows? Maybe maybe Microsoft will introduce the Microsoft Premier class requirements for Windows 12. I don't know. So, anyways, yes, there is another build of Windows on the way, another version of Windows on the way. And, you know, I'm not... I'm not much a fan of going back to the idea of having a new version of Windows every three years. You know, I said earlier that, of course, Windows 10, I didn't much care for the feature updates, but the thing is, we still, we basically had a, had a, a base version of Windows. I mean, we had Windows 10 come out in 2015, and we had the last feature update of Windows 10 released in 2022. So that's seven years. And Windows 10 will be supported until 2025, so that's 10 years. Now, don't get me wrong, Microsoft generally has supported its operating system for 10 years, sometimes even longer, like with Windows XP, for example, and Windows 7 to a little bit of extent. Windows 7 got like 10 years and a little bit of change there. So, anyways, guys, that's that wraps up for this video. So, yeah, Windows 12, as we know it now, is on the way, and it should be coming out next year in 2024. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we get notified new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment and share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel, that's Cubed Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.